review of A Theory of Justice. 正义论 by John Rawls. 约翰罗尔斯 first published 1972, Chapter One: Justice as Fairness. 第一章正义及公平 section for the original strict primitive position and justification. 第四节原始状态与正当理由 Rawls, as we have seen, is committed to the idea that justice is fairness. 正义及公平 What he must now do is determine how to go about selecting or choosing which principles it is appropriate or rational, 理性 to select and adopt in order to craft his hypothetical social contract. In this section, Rawls makes abundant use of the term reasonable, 合理 For example, he argues that if a man knew that he was wealthy, he might find it rational to advance the principle that various taxes for welfare measures should be counted unjust. If, on the other hand, He knew that he was poor. He would most likely propose the contrary principle. Thus, believes Rawls, it seems reasonable and generally acceptable that no one should be advantaged or disadvantaged by natural fortune or social circumstances. And the choice of principles, it is essential. He believes that particular inclinations and aspirations, and various conceptions of what is deemed to be good, do not unduly affect the principles adopted to achieve this outcome. Rawls has recourse to his proposed veil of ignorance. 无知之幕 This is more or less an intellectual sleight of hand, a method by which extraneous matters can be filtered out, taking the subject situation, the event unfolding in real time, back to its original primitive state. Only in this way can a fair and just outcome be confidently guaranteed for all concerned. In this primitive state, equality between human beings as moral persons, as creatures who have a conception of their good. And are capable of exercising a sense of justice is achieved and maintained. Rawls proposes that all this is possible simply by subjecting every circumstance to the purifying ritual that comes from simply thinking in the abstract. By imposing his mysterious veil of ignorance, what underlies Rawls' theoretical construct is his committed belief that conditions will be defined based upon the principles of justice. That rational persons will adopt these principles in order to advance their interests as equals in situations where no one knows the advantages or disadvantages arising from the myriad of social and natural contingencies. Rawls makes what would seem at the time he wrote this work, in the third quarter of the 20th century, a fairly straightforward and uncontroversial statement. Dart. We are confident that religious intolerance, 宗教上不容易己 And racial discrimination, 种族歧视 are unjust. We think that we have examined these things with care and have reached what we believe is an impartial judgment, not likely to be distorted by an excessive attention to our own interests. He goes on to claim that although these convictions are provisional, they are nonetheless fixed points which we presume any conception of justice must fit. I wonder, in light of the events over the course of the first quarter of the twenty-first century. Whether Rawls would be as confident in tying his theory of justice to a principle of religious tolerance, especially where the religions in question play and practice serious overt intolerance against others, especially in regard to 50% of the world's population, women, religious tolerance may well be slipping as a fixed point about which the theory of justice can be securely attached. Rawls does offer a way out of this relativistic dilemma, a process he terms reflective equilibrium. 反思平衡 To address this challenge, Rawls proposes that there will almost always be a choice. He states that we can modify the account of the initial situation, or we can revise our existing judgments. For even judgments, says Rawls, can be taken and accepted provisionally, as simply fixed points always liable to revision. In this way, by going back and forth, and sometimes altering the conditions of the initial contract, Rawls believes that considered judgment. Through a process of reflective equilibrium, will be achieved ostensibly by exercising reasonable choice. 同合理选择理论 This is his justification. Essentially, life and decisions are a matter of achieving a balance. The starting point for this process must always be a primitive state that all human beings are equal, regardless of personal, social, economic, or political circumstance. Achieving justice comes down to fine-tuning. Finding the equilibrium to be found in any and all situations.